Have you ever looked up at the night sky and wondered, why? Why are we all here? What's out there? And how does it all work? Well, you're certainly not alone. Hello, everyone, and welcome to The Big Why. I'm just as curious as you are about the universe and everything in it. From the depths of the ocean to the furthest reaches of space, no question is too big, no topic too strange for us. We'll crack open the mysteries of black holes, journey to the edge of the universe, and explore the mind-blowing discoveries that are changing our world. So if you're ready to unleash your inner scientist, ask the tough questions, and explore the universe alongside me, then buckle up, and let's ask why. We move through the world, experiencing the passage of time and navigating the vast expanse of space. But have you ever stopped to ponder the nature of these fundamental aspects of our existence? What is time? What is space? Are they merely constructs of our minds? Or do they exist independently of our perception? In this video, we'll delve into the fascinating concept of absolute space and time, exploring the historical and philosophical debates that have surrounded these fundamental concepts. We'll examine the views of renowned thinkers like Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz, who held contrasting views on the nature of space and time, and we'll consider the implications of their ideas for our understanding of the universe and our place within it. Whether you're a physics enthusiast, a philosophy buff, or simply someone curious about the nature of reality, this exploration promises to challenge your assumptions and spark a deeper appreciation for the fundamental building blocks of our universe. And who knows? Perhaps by contemplating these age-old questions, you'll gain a new perspective on the world around you and the mysteries that lie beyond our everyday experience. The concept of absolute space and time has been a cornerstone of physics and philosophy for centuries, shaping our understanding of the universe and our place within it. At its core, this concept posits that space and time are independent and fundamental aspects of reality, existing as fixed and unchanging entities that provide a backdrop for all events and phenomena. In physics, absolute space and time often refer to a preferred frame of reference, a universal standard against which all motion and events can be measured. This idea can be particularly influential in classical mechanics, where the laws of motion are often formulated with respect to an absolute frame. However, the concept of absolute space and time has also been subject of intense debate and controversy, with competing theories and interpretations emerging over time. As we delve deeper into this topic, we'll explore the historical development of these ideas, the philosophical arguments for and against them, and the implications they hold for our understanding of the universe. The roots of the concept of absolute space can be traced back to ancient Greece and the works of Aristotle. In Aristotelian physics, space was not considered an empty void but rather a plenum, a continuous and filled expanse. Within this plenum, objects had natural places determined by their composition, with heavier elements like earth and water tending to move downwards towards the center of the universe, while lighter elements like air and fire moved upwards. This Aristotelian view implied a version of absolute space, as the directions of up and down were considered absolute and fixed with respect to the center of the universe, which was believed to be the center of the Earth. Centuries later, Copernicus's heliocentric model of the solar system challenged the geocentric view of Aristotle. However, traces of the concept of absolute space can be still found in Copernicus's work. In his De Revolutionibus Orbium Celestium, he refers to an immobile sphere of stars, suggesting a fixed reference frame against which the motions of the planets could be measured. This width of absolute space in Copernicus's work foreshadowed the more explicit formulation of the concept by later thinkers like Isaac Newton. While Copernicus's model revolutionized our understanding of the solar system, it still retains some elements of the Aristotelian worldview, including the notion of a fixed and absolute frame of reference. Sir Isaac Newton, the renowned physicist and mathematician, further solidified the concept of absolute space and time in his groundbreaking work, Philosophia Naturalis Principia Mathematica. For Newton, absolute time and absolute space were independent and fundamental aspects of reality, existing as a fixed and unchanging framework within which all physical events unfold. Newton described absolute time as flowing uniformly and continuously, independent of any external influences. It was an invisible and intangible entity, accessible only through mathematical reasoning. In contrast, relative time was merely a measurable manifestation of absolute time, observed through the motion of objects like the moon or sun. Likewise, Newton envisioned absolute space as a vast and unchanging expanse that existed independently of any objects within it. Relative space, on the other hand, was a measurable dimension defined by the position of objects relative to each other. 
These notions implied that the absolute state of motion of an object could be determined by its position and movement within absolute space. An object could be either at absolute rest or moving at a specific absolute speed. To support his theory, Newton presented empirical examples. He argued that the bulging equator of a rotating sphere indicated its rotation relative to absolute space, and the tension in a rope connecting two spheres revealed their absolute rotation around their common center of gravity. Newton's concept of absolute space and time provided a theoretical foundation for his laws of motion and the development of classical mechanics. It offered a framework for understanding the motion of objects and the forces acting upon them, shaping our understanding of the physical world for centuries to come. However, as we'll explore further, this concept would later be challenged and refined with the advent of new theories and discoveries in physics. While Newton's concept of absolute space and time was groundbreaking, it wasn't without its critics and detractors. Throughout history, differing views have emerged, challenging the notion of a fixed and independent framework for the universe. Gottfried Leibniz, a contemporary of Newton, argued against absolute space and time. He believed that space only made sense in terms of the relative positions of objects, and time only made sense in terms of the relative motion of bodies. In his view, space and time were not independent entities, but rather relational concepts derived from our observations of the world. George Berkeley, an 18th century Irish philosopher, further challenged the notion of absolute space with his famous thought experiment of a solitary rotating sphere. He argued that without any external reference point, the concept of the sphere's rotation becomes meaningless. This thought experiment was later revived by Albert Einstein in his development of general relativity. Ernst Mach, a 19th century Austrian physicist and philosopher, proposed Mach's principle, which suggested that inertia, the tendency of an object to resist changes in its motion, is not an intrinsic property, but a result of the gravitational interaction with the rest of the universe. He argued that even seemingly absolute concepts like mass and motion are ultimately relative and dependent on the distribution of matter in the universe. These objections to absolute space and time can be seen, in hindsight, as attempts to introduce operational definitions for these concepts. They sought to define space and time not as abstract entities, but in terms of how they are measured and observed within a particular frame of reference. Even within the framework of Newtonian mechanics, the modern view is that absolute space is unnecessary. Instead, the concept of inertial frames of reference has taken precedence. These are reference frames that move uniformly with respect to each other, and the laws of physics remain the same with any inertial frame. This principle, known as Galilean relativity, eliminates the need for a privileged absolute space. Inertial frames are often defined with respect to the fixed stars, providing a practical reference point for measuring motion and describing physical phenomena. These evolving perspectives on absolute space and time highlight the dynamic nature of scientific inquiry and the ongoing quest to refine our understanding of the universe. While Newton's ideas were revolutionary in their time, they have since been challenged, refined, and ultimately superseded by more comprehensive comprehensive theories like Einstein's theory of relativity. To formalize the concept of absolute space and time, Newton introduced mathematical definitions that lay the groundwork for classical mechanics. He defined space, as understood in Newtonian mechanics, as three-dimensional and Euclidean, with a fixed orientation. This means that space can be represented by a three-dimensional coordinate system, with each point uniquely identified by its coordinates, x, y, and z. This concept of space is often denoted as E3. Within the spatial framework, the position of any point, or P, can be described by a radius vector, a line segment originating from a fixed point, or O, which is the origin, and extending to point P. The set of all possible radius vectors in space form a three-dimensional linear vector space denoted as R3. This vector space is equipped with a scalar product, a mathematical operation that allows us to calculate distances and angles between vectors. Time, in Newton's view, is a scalar quantity, meaning it has a magnitude but no direction. It's considered to be the same throughout all of space and is denoted as T. The ordered set of all possible values of T forms a time axis, representing the flow of time from the past to the future. Motion, also known as path or trajectory, is defined as a function that maps a point in time to a position in space. In other words, it describes how the position of an object changes over time. These four concepts, space, time, position, and motion, form the fundamental building blocks of Newton's classical mechanics. While he considered them to be well known to all, his precise mathematical definitions provided a rigorous framework for understanding and describing the motion of objects in the universe. 
This mathematical foundation allowed Newton to formulate his famous laws of motion, which describe how forces act on objects and how objects move in response to those forces. These laws, along with his law of universal gravitation, revolutionized our understanding of the physical world and laid the groundwork for centuries of scientific inquiry. The advent of Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity in the early 20th century revolutionized our understanding of space and time. Prior to this, space and time were considered distinct and independent entities as outlined in Newtonian mechanics. However, special relativity revealed a profound interconnectedness between the two, demonstrating that they are not absolute but relative to the observer's frame of reference. In Einstein's framework, space and time are no longer separate entities but are interwoven into a single continuum known as space-time. This four-dimensional fabric of the universe is not static and unchanging but can be warped and distorted by the presence of mass and energy. One of the key insights of special relativity is that the measurement of time and space is not absolute but depends on the relative motion of the observer and the observed object. This phenomenon, known as time dilation, implies that time can pass at different rates for observers in different reference frames, particularly at speeds approaching the speed of light. Furthermore, special relativity revealed that the speed of light in a vacuum is constant for all observers, regardless of their relative motion or the motion of the light source. This fundamental principle has profound implications for our understanding of space, time, and the nature of causality itself. Einstein's theories of special and general relativity fundamentally altered our understanding of the universe, replacing the Newtonian concepts of absolute space and time with a more dynamic and interconnected view of space-time. This shift in perspective has not only revolutionized physics, but has also had a profound impact on our philosophical understanding of the nature of reality and our place within it. The concept of absolute simultaneity, which refers to events occurring at the same time in different locations, is a key aspect of the debate between absolute and relative views of time. In Newtonian physics, absolute simultaneity was assumed to be possible, meaning that two events happening simultaneously in one frame of reference would be also simultaneous in all other frames. However, Einstein's theory of relativity challenged this notion. It introduced the concept of relativity of simultaneity, which states that the simultaneity of events is not absolute, but depends on the observer's frame of reference. This means that two events that appear simultaneous to one observer may not appear simultaneous to another observer who is in motion relative to the first. The faster the relative motion, the greater the discrepancy in the perceived timing of the events. The relativity of simultaneity arises due to the finite speed of light. Since light takes time to travel, the information about an event reaches different observers at different times, depending on their distance from the event and their relative motion. This has profound implications for our understanding of time and causality. It means that there is no universal now that applies to all observers. What is simultaneous for one observer may be in the past or future for another. This lack of absolute simultaneity challenges the notion of a universal clock that ticks at the same rate for everyone. Instead, time becomes a more flexible and relative concept intertwined with space and motion. In the framework of relativity, space-time is the ultimate arena which events unfold. It's a four-dimensional continuum where time and space are inextricably linked. The concept of absolute simultaneity, while intuitive in our everyday experience, is ultimately an illusion when we consider the vastness of the universe and the effects of relativity. Albert Einstein's theories of relativity further challenged the Newtonian concept of absolute space and time. In his later writings, Einstein reintroduced the term aether, but not in the traditional sense of luminiferous medium for light waves. Instead, he used it to refer to the properties of space itself, a terminology that was not widely adopted. In his 1920 lecture, Ether and the Theory of Relativity, Einstein acknowledged the need for a concept like the Aether to explain certain physical phenomena, such as the rotation of a solitary sphere. He argued that the mechanical behavior of objects in empty space depends not only on their relative positions and velocities but also on their state of rotation, a characteristic that cannot be attributed to the objects themselves. Einstein suggested that Newton could have used the term aether instead of absolute space to refer to this imperceptible entity that acts as a backdrop for physical events. The key point, according to Einstein, is that something real, even if not directly observable, must exist to allow for the reality of acceleration or rotation. However, Einstein's concept of the aether and general relativity differed significantly from the classical aether and the aether of special relativity. In general relativity, the aether is not absolute but dynamic and influenced by the presence of matter and energy. The curvature of space-time, which determines the behavior of matter and the propagation of light, is itself shaped by the distribution of mass and energy in the universe. 
Thus, Einstein's reinterpretation of the Aether aligned with the principles of general relativity, where space-time is not a fixed and unchanging backdrop, but a dynamic entity that interacts with matter and energy. This new understanding of the Aether eliminated the need for absolute space and time, replacing it with the more nuanced and complex picture of the universe. We've embarked on a journey through the fascinating concept of absolute space and time, tracing its evolution from the ancient Greeks to the groundbreaking theories of Einstein. We've explored the Newtonian model of a fixed and unchanging universe, as well as the challenges posed by Leibniz, Berkeley, Mach, and ultimately, Einstein himself. The concept of absolute space and time, while initially intuitive and seemingly fundamental, has undergone significant transformations as our understanding of the universe has deepened. The relativity of simultaneity, the curvature of space-time, and the interdependence of space, time, matter, and energy have challenged our most basic assumptions about the nature of reality. As we continue to explore the universe and delve deeper into the mysteries of physics, the concepts of space and time will undoubtedly continue to evolve and transform. The ongoing quest for understanding the fundamental fabric of the universe is a testament to the power of human curiosity and our relentless pursuit of knowledge. But the questions surrounding absolute space and time are not just for physicists and philosophers to ponder. They have implications for our understanding of the world around us, our place in the universe, and the very nature of the existence itself. By contemplating these questions, we can gain a deeper appreciation for the complexities of the universe and the limitations of our own perception. We can also recognize the power of scientific inquiry to challenge our assumptions and expand our understanding of the fundamental nature of reality. Thank you everyone for watching. My name's The Big Why. Don't forget to drop a like, and if you're new to the Why Not family, a follow. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.